Hello and welcome to the Leeds Rugby League Hall of Fame. And to welcome this year's inductees, I'd like to welcome Phil Kaplan, the chairman of the Leeds Rhinos Heritage Group. If you were to draw up a profile of someone who is the epitome of what rugby league and life stands for, they are encapsulated by the Pontefract Pocket Rocket, who first made an impact with Junior's Featherston Lions. The little man constantly taking on and overcoming the bigger odds, the courageous underdog we are all predisposed to support, forever proving the naysayers and can't possibly do us wrong, he represents the best of what we all hope to be. Few in such a competitive environment transcend club allegiances, but has been seen recently in particular, his honesty and bravery on and off the field absolutely does. From his debut in 2001 and for 16 further seasons, he was the talisman of the best that the competition represents, no matter the Rhino's golden generation success, he was such an integral part of. The first Leeds player to be a twice winner of the Harry Sunderland Trophy, including by a unanimous margin in 2011, his astonishing speed off the mark, Terrific support play which saw him reap some superb tries on the end of flowing moves he often instigated. And the most sterling of defenders is the archetypal modern scrum half, selflessly putting the team before his acknowledged preference of starting in his favoured role. The quality, humanity and dignity shown in subverting the personal for the ultimate cause spoke volumes about his work ethic, ultra-determination and sacrifice. With eight Super League winners rings, including the acknowledged best ever solo try at Old Trafford, two Challenge Cup final successes and three World Club Challenge triumphs and league leader shields, he is the most successful number seven in the club's history. He also made 20 appearances in total for his country and in 2007 was awarded the George Smith Medal as the best player in the Great Britain series against New Zealand. Always family first. He has been and continues to be a magnificent ambassador for the club, the sport and humanity. The 16th inductee is Rob Burrow, heritage number 1326, 429 appearances between 2001 and 2017. Yeah, firstly, massive congrats to, to Rob. It's, it's well deserved. Uh, champion, yeah, champion player, halfback, the famous Leeds Rhinos team, you know, the most successful Rhinos team in history and in Super League, really. And uh, so with Rob, it's just so explosive, uh, so tough, so competitive, um, pretty, pretty demanding on the field, really animated, really pushed the team around. He, he used to run up uh, the left edge uh, um, at the Rhinos there and you had players like Ali Latiti, uh, Keith Senior, um, Scotty Donald at first, and then it was Ryan Hall, and he used to run that left edge, and man, they were lethal. Yeah, for, first time I met him would be um, probably about under 11s. I always played the year above for East Leeds, so I was um, always playing against bigger lads, and I remember dropping back to my own age to play for Yorkshire under 11s, and uh, there was this little whippet running around, running around the field with an head guard on, and I was I was really small. Uh, um, yeah, I was probably one of the smallest in the team, but. I remember we had a team photo at the end for Yorkshire and uh, I thought I'll go stand next to this kid because I'm taller than him and, <laughs> and it turned out to be Rob and you know, our friendship, friendship uh, blossomed from then. We pretty much all mirrored each other's careers all the way through. Um, obviously I played for, for East Leeds and Rob was over there in Cass but um, we always played representative together and it always felt that we were always, uh, always touring together as well. We, you know, Australia a few times, France and different places, South Africa and uh, we're always roommates as well, so we ended up spending uh, spending tons of time together. So I'd probably say in eleven would be the, the you know the first time that we we started playing together and against each other. I've seen that for it's an amazing when you think about the journey that you both went on. It's amazing to look at that, look at that photo. Biggest head guy looked like one of them astronaut helmets on it on his uh, on his shoulders, didn't it? But I, I find it amazing to think that Maguire and Burrow are, are a bit like. They're a bit like uh, beer Welcome and kebabs. Wax. Beer and kebabs. You don't have one without the other, do you? And to think you can trace it back to that to that first time and and, and look at a bloke that had everything going against him. He was so small, so diminutive, so underdeveloped in lots of different ways. But when he had a rugby ball in his hand, there was nobody to touch him. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think we, you know, one of my favourite, well, probably my favourite moment in the game is. Um, 
uh, both ourselves lifting the trophy in 2017 and then obviously thinking yeah. back to when we first started playing together yeah. in uh, for Yorkshire under 11s it's you know it's a what is it 25 year yeah. you know time span and it's really it's crazy the amount of games and time that we, we, we would have spent together and um, you know I cherish those those moments that we that we spent on the field together we had a brilliant understanding we always seemed to click and obviously got on really well off the field yeah. as well and you know it's really strange how our journey sort of sort of mirrored each other all the way through. You know him and Megs you were obviously the halves and um, he's, he's you know he was just a good team man just he's just close with everyone. I always thought you know there was a lot of selflessness involved there and for, for mine like I think it's one of the most important ingredients in a you know if you want to have a successful side is people giving up their egos and you know putting the team first and Rob was you know, he was paramount and all that, and because uh, we, you know, we we had a, a, a team that had, you know, some real creative players. I mean, you know, Kevin Sinfield is so creative, and Danny Maguire, um, Brent Webb. Um, so there was four guys on the field that, you know, with Rob that that can ball play. So there's a lot of selflessness involved in all of them, you know, to to, to run the team because it was rich. It was rich with creativity, yeah. um, you know, and so that's, uh, you know, one of the traits of Rob, you know, it's team first attitude. Back in the 2000s, early uh, 2000s it was, I, I came across Rob as a player. Um, I think he was playing for England A. Uh, we were on a tour for Australia and um, just the way that he performed in that game, um, that's all we could speak about uh, really after the match is just um, how small he was, how strong he was, uh, how good he was. Um, you know, all those superlatives that you'd say about a, a young up-and-coming player, but uh, there was something special about Rob that night and uh, still something special about him today. One of the most explosive and dynamic players that I ever played with. Um, you know, and you don't even take his size into account, that was just how he played the game. But uh, to do it at that size um, and to compete the way he did, I've never seen uh, another player uh, do what he does on the free field. I was way bigger than him, but he used to do my tackles and you know the runs. That's why I like you know when I'm tired, and I was tired all the time. So he used to come in and do like little darts, which gave us a rest. He was just one of those those type of players, like um, you know, um, pick these up. You know when when the boys are tired and and just magic. He was magical. Eh? You know some of the stuff that he could do was phenomenal. You know, phenomenal. Like I, I could even yeah. You know you kind of dream about it, but he did it. You know he scored tries and. Um, big plays at big times, you know, vital times, and that was him, man, he was just incredible. One of the things I think with Rob is if, if he felt, when he had the ball in his hand, a lot of people think he made it up as he was going along, but if he felt that you were in a better position than him, he would give it you, and you yep. would have that understanding. He, he nearly always, nearly always gave me the ball, and I thought <laughs> when Jamie Jones Buchanan was talking about that try in 2011, at the grand final and he was screaming for the ball, mm. Rob give me the ball and then Rob looked at it, weighed it up and then did it and it, it was a try that I think will always be synonymous with, with, um, with Rob and his contribution to the club on those great games and those big games particularly but he, he was always pretty good with me. When I first saw him I just looked at him and I thought he was all ears, all <laughs> nose, all teeth and uh, he was just somebody, I, I looked at him and thought, my word, how's he going to get on this fella? But having trained with him for a period of time, you realise, don't you, that his, his ability to change direction, his ability to look at a big scary monster and just think, well, I can go around them, I can go underneath them or, or just beat them with a little bit of smart, a little I bit think, of intellect. Yeah, I think probably a lot of people underestimated Rob throughout his, throughout his career. You know, I think, you, you know, you probably would have took a look at him and thought, you know, he's having it today, he's, yeah. he's small, he's going to get traffic run at him. And, but he, he was always so brave, even, yeah. you know, I remember him in, you know, in them early days, in probably 11 to 16, picking, you know, front rowers up and, and dumping them on the, on the he back. Did. And he did. He never shirked from, away from the yeah. tough stuff. And that's, I think that's probably why everybody respected him so much. He, yeah. he was such a tough player and just about mine and his understanding, it was sort of almost telepathic, but I suppose that was all the time, you know, we, we played, you know, academy, academy rugby together, we, like I say, we spent loads of time together on tours and I think partnerships are, are developed over, not just on the rugby field, off the field as well, you get to understand, understand the person and um, I'd like to think when he sort of carried the ball or was looking to do something, I, I 
sort of knew, knew, knew he was going to do it, if that makes sense, and, and vice versa. So, you know, we always had a really good understanding that way. I just love the difference of Rob, his ability to uh, support the ball, uh, always around the ball, always yapping, always chatting and, um, and tough. You know, you, you can't say much more about Rob as, um, you know, you talk about all the skill parts of the game, but it was his toughness, uh, you know, the one-on-one -on -one tackles he had to make because people tried to spot him up all the time, but, um, you know, you, you'd never get past Rob. Let's talk about Rob Burrow, <laughs> the trickster. Let's talk about Burrow and the way that he made my life a misery, the way that he made Kylie's life a misery when I left. He, he kind of looked after me, Rob. He was my, my little mate there, so he, he didn't pick on me, but uh, a few of the big boys, he loved getting into Kylie Little Boy. Yeah, yeah. He was his number one uh, yeah, yeah. target. The amount of times he stole my underwear, he stole my clothes when we were in um, the gym somewhere, we might have been up at David Lloyd's just on, on the ring road there. He, I cannot count. He must have had tricks that he's played on you. Or did Do he you know respect what? your partnership? It's really weird, yeah. It's, we, we almost had a, a pact that was unspoken. I wish I'd have known I know, that yeah. pact. And there's a bit of a theme there to his, to his targets, isn't there? It seems to be front rowers, yeah. I don't know. He's if a bully. A, a bit of a bully, but he's, off, he's, he's going for the bigger guys, so it's... Uh, Bravery, I suppose, again. Um, but yeah, we, we always had uh, an unwritten rule that we never um, we never sort of played any pranks. I used to encourage him a little bit to try and. Did you? I was a little I bit didn't pull, know that. pulling the strings a little bit behind the scenes, and um, like I say, go, we go and steal his <laughs> underpants. <laughs> we did a few things to to Kev Sinfield and Jonesy on one tour, and but yeah, me and Rob, we we always had a bit of a pact, and yeah, I tell a story, a, a pretty funny one, and it's probably the only time he sort of got me, but it's only it's only small and. Rob used to get there first every game, he was always the first change and I, I went far behind to go for a massage. And my peg was literally opposite the, um, opposite the um, door as you came into the change rooms. So I go for a massage, put all my clothes nice and neat on my peg and uh, I get back from my massage and I can see my white Calvin Kleins. Uh, and I look and I think, what's that? And there's a big brown stain down the middle <laughs> of my white Calvin Kleins and I'm like, I'm sure they're fresh on, I'm sure I had a shower before I set off. <laughs> so anyway, I scurry over to my peg, take them off and put them in my bag before hopefully nobody sees it. Anyway, the lads are rolling about on the floor laughing and I'm like thinking, what's going on here? Anyway, turns out Rob's got a Jaffa, the, the chocolate off a Jaffa cake and smudged it in my undies anyway. So that was probably the only time that um, he did something to me. Other than that, we were probably... It's quite tame, that Yeah, quite it? tame compared to some of the stuff that you had to... You had to deal with that. Listen, I, I was tormented on a, on a regular basis, whether it was my shoes, whether it was my socks, there was always something missing out of my bag. Now, as you say, I think we respectfully looked at our game day stuff and left that alone because we all needed to be on the money, but it was open season, weren't it, during, yeah. during the week and training and everything. And but I always think you, you, need, you need somebody like that within your group. He's, he always lifted morale, um, you know, on a, on a bad performance you lost at the weekend, and you need somebody to be to be in that different mindset. You yeah. know, we had we had a few moody guys that hated losing, and you know, sometimes Monday or Saturday mornings after a loss can be, um, you know, can be tough places, and you always need a character in there that can can lighten the mood. And, and Rob was definitely that that person throughout our, our through, time. Through quotes from films or the just, office yeah, just whatever, or whatever, whatever it under was. his breath. Just the one-liners, he's, he's probably the best, I've, I know, one-liners, he, he knows them all from films and The Office and Partridge and, you know, somebody that can just lighten that mood is, is really important in, in team dynamics, I think. When he walked into a room, it sort of lit up. I think um, it was a practical joker. My, my locker was down the other end, but you could always hear Rob. Um, always laughing, giggling, taking the mickey out of someone, which is always in good fun, so. Um, he's a relationship with Kylie Lillawai, I used to love that, the big guy and the little guy. and. Um, the little combination was great to watch and great to listen to. Cheeky guy, you know, just always a happy chat, always, um, you know, looking for, uh, you know, someone to prank or, you know, joke around with. He was just one of those guys who just, you know, brought um, excitement, you know, he was um, always cheered the boys up, I guess, uh, but he had a good heart, you know, um, probably one of those like Mighty Mouse kind of, kind of type dudes, you know, he's just real explosive, but got a good heart, good sense of humour. Anyway, he got along with everyone, I guess. And he, he was so selfless, and I suppose that was, you know, in 2011 when he when Brian Mack first came in and he got uh, put to the bench. Tough time for him, that. Yeah. I had a couple of conversations with him. I reckon you would have done as well. Yeah, it tested his loyalty to I the was club, didn't it? I was kind of put into seven. Um, obviously, Kev was six, and we were all really good friends, so it was like, 
there could have been a problem there. There could have been like somebody set the bat and ball home and um, you know make a real issue within the Did team. Did you ever talk about it? Did yeah, you we ever spoke about now? it a little bit, but um, we had that much respect for each other that it, it happened. But we just got on with it. I don't know. It was really it was, it was weird. Um, and yeah, you know, just again, he just did his did what his role for the team to to the best. And yeah, I'm not saying he didn't moan. He, he was disappointed. He wanted to play, and he was upset with with some of the decisions that the coach at the time made. But I suppose his big point was I'm going to go out there and prove every weekend that I'm, you know, that I'm worthy to be, you know, starting in this team. That I'm a valuable player within this team. And you know, obviously, what he did in the final, and you know, what he did throughout the rest of that that time that he probably played. You know, interchange nine or nine, he, he would always turn in games yeah. and he would always coming up with special players. Yeah, the, the 2011 uh, grand final try for Rob Burrow was, was such an iconic moment for the Leeds Rhinos. What I saw, my vision from where I sat or stood uh, watching that was just amazing. I still feel like it was yesterday, just so, uh, yeah, just to see him weave and, and bump and, and away he went. It just um, ducked his head, typical Rob Burrow run, but the ability to, to move really quick sideways as much as he, he moved quickly uh, going forward was you know, instrumental in that try. And you know, in, the, in the situation of the game as well, in a grand final at Old Trafford, uh, so many Leeds Rhinos fans just got so, many joy, so much joy out of that. But to have that view and that vision to see Rob pull that try off, uh, it's, it's one of the best, best visions of my career. It's, um, and to win on the back of that try, it was, it was amazing. It's, a, it's an iconic moment in, in the Leeds Rhinos history. If any names getting tossed up, uh, Rob's got to be at the top of the list or, or somewhere close there. And uh, yeah, uh, no one could be more more uh, deserving. You know, his uh, being inducted in the Hall of Fame is just thoroughly deserved. Um, you know, that's his, his playing career, most successful seven in Rhino history. Uh, you know, and what he's gone through is, is you know heartbreaking. Um, but you see, you see you, you just see Rob as he is as a player. He's just you know he he never quits. He he's tough. Um, you know he lo he always loved that clip from uh, Al Pacino. Um, you know on any given Sunday, and you know fight for the inch, and and that's him. You know like that's Rob. He fights for every inch and every part of his life. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, and that's, that's him in a nutshell. One of the things he doesn't get credit for, um, and when I first met him, when I first looked at him, I used to think, I'm gonna have, have to look after this kid, mate. I'm gonna have to look after him because he's, he's a bit brittle, he's a bit fragile, he's only knee high to a grasshopper. Um, I very quickly realized that he, he was tough. He was tough in his mentality, he was tough in his approach. Yeah and he was brave and courageous in the way that he looked at big men and, and made fools of them, let, left them chasing shadows. I never really thought of him as being the smaller player. I mean, he just, he walked into the side every week. He's a, he was a Rhino's number seven and, uh, and he was fed by the opposition. Uh, you could see that when we, you know, we got a little bit of momentum in our attacking sets, you know, the threat of Rob running is, it's just so scary for the opposition. And I had a mate once over in York tell me, you know, gee, when Rob runs, it's like he's shot out of a cannon. He's so quick. And uh, not only that, he's so strong through the hips and strong with it. So there were times he'd take the line on and he would go, you know, go at some gaps. And, and I would in my mind think that might be a bit too small, this one, but boom, he'd come out the other side. He was fighting it, Rob. He, he didn't yeah. mind a little blow up on the field. Yeah. And, He'd never really blow up much with, with his teammates. No. Um, that would probably be more of me and Jonesy that had uh, been blowing up with each other and JP. But Rob, Rob didn't mind a bit of an argument with the opposition and you know, you get into a tough game, you know, them Bradford days, the Saints, you know, the rivalries mm. with Saints and Wigan and, and Rob was in there in the mix and never shied away. And um, you know, you speak about his his talents with the ball, his ability to beat people, his his footwork, his speed, but his bravery, that's yeah. that for me that's that's the top of yeah, his, yeah. his... Even though, and, you know, we... we so that, that, that era that stretched from the, the early part of the century, the 2001, when, when you all started to come through, a bit before Kev, 
all the way up to when you left the club. You look at that era there and his, the constant within his game is everybody was trying to find a place for him. Everyone was trying to put him in a, in a spot in the defensive line where he wasn't explo exploited. But it didn't matter who ran at him. No. He, he, he jumped up, hit him round the ankles, picked him up and drove him into the ground, didn't yeah. he? And he, 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 he again, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, yeah. he didn't lose out in them stakes, did he? he? Used to, me and him used to try and hide on, on the wing, like the halfbacks, you, you, you do, you try and protect him. And you know, sometimes me and Rob would find ourselves on the same side and it was a bit of a competition too, could go closer to the wing. So I'd push him, I'd push him in <laughs> or he'd push me out. And it, it would, I think it would, who, who were more tired, I had to go a bit closer in. But, but then, like I say, when anyone sort of came in his alley or came down his channel, you know, nine times out of ten he made him pay, he, he picked him up and dumped him on the on the back and I think that's, for me, you know, young halfbacks now, it's, you probably coach him offence all the time, how to be good offence, but if your defence isn't strong, yeah. you know, the, all the things that you want to try and apply offensively you can't do because you lose your confidence if you're not tackling and, yeah. and, and Rob was probably one of the, you know, one of the best defenders, yeah. one of the best halfback defenders we've seen, he, you know, really strong, very rarely missed tackles. So tough and you know, stayed in the game and really competitive, yet flip side, off the field, just such a gentleman, you know, he's a credit to his family um, and how he's raised his mum and dad and his wife Lindsay and family, uh, the children, you know, what a fantastic family of the boroughs. One of the bonuses of going to the Rhinos for me was uh, to whip around to Florida uh, to, to play a, a trial match, I think we played Salford, so um, I got to experience um, the passion of Rob Burrow in, in the, the country of the US. So, uh, very passionate um, when he went over there, loved Florida. Um, but yeah, he took me to Disneyland, I jumped in his car. Um, he was the leader, he was, the, he was the, the driver of the car and we had a couple of young boys around us. But uh, we went to Disneyland, so a lot of those memories and those experiences um, that I remember about my, my time over in the USA revolves around Rob. And, Got to know his passion for Michael, ja Michael Jackson as well. Oh, he loves Michael Jackson. If you yeah. put him, if you said anything bad about Michael Jackson, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be at you, man. He'll, yeah, he'll give it to you. He'll, yeah, he'll let you know. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun in that that time around in, in Florida, and I know uh, Rob bought a place around there, in Macy's Villa. So didn't get a chance to go there, but uh, for me, uh, I know it made a lot of people happy because a lot of people went around there. Florida, um, we got to go and play over there a, a couple of times. Uh, once the South, um, South Sydney, and um, against Salford. Great time. Um, it was really awesome over there. So just to be in camp together, I think we were there close to 10 days. Uh, and yeah, it was, uh, you know, everyone gets on great and got, got to play against a, a Sydney team, uh, which the, the, the players really enjoyed. And uh, Just, yeah, the same as we, we um, you know, honoured and, um, you know, um, just to you know be a part of the team, but that he played with, but also grace the, the field with him. Um, he's a great man, um, um, lovely, uh, genuine person. Their bond is 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 in friendship that's passed. You know, that's come on, and that's been proven by how everyone's you know getting together to help Rob, um, and uh, you know, led by Kev. Led by uh, Kevin and uh, the boys all jumped on board. Everybody, you know, we all love Rob. Um, you know, we feel a long way away here uh, down down under and uh, down in New Zealand. But you know, our hearts are, are with Rob and the Burrow family all the way. Not one to be too emotional at times, but um, to see those the visions come through my TV screen. Um, you know. A lot of times this year, firstly talking about the testimonial match for uh, Jamie Jones and, and Rob, to see him run onto the field, that, um, uh, to, to give anything just to be there and more importantly be on the field with him was, you know, it's just a, now still gives me chills. So to see that and to see what he's done um, post that is amazing. And then obviously you've seen what Kev did uh, many weeks ago with the seven for seven and the amount of money that was raised. So. Um, you talk about special places, you talk, talk about special clubs and special things, but they all revolve around people. Uh, they're the, the special moments and uh, are all about people. And you put so many good people in a team in that golden decade. And um, to see the, what's happened this year, the, the amount of support that's been around uh, Rob um, on the back of all those special people in that special club, um, it's just, it's so proud to be a part of and play a small, a really small part in the, in the Rhinos history to be there to say I was a Leeds Rhinos player. Oh mate, just 
completely honoured and um, humbled to have uh, spent so much time with him and playing alongside him. Uh, Just yeah. special guy, eh? Love you, mate. I've never seen a group of players so close. Um, and being humble, um, you know, being courteous, being kind, uh, looking after each other. You know, and Rob is a big part of why that culture is like that. Rob is the first player from the summer era to be inducted into the Leeds Hall of Fame. It's my privilege and pleasure to induct you into the Leeds Rugby League Hall of Fame. All my life I've been a Rhinos fan. All my life I just wanted to play for Leeds. I'm just proud to have played at this wonderful club for so many years, let alone be inducted into the Hall of Fame of all trophies that we were lucky enough to win. This one means the most. There is no club in the world that compares to the Rhinos. A massive thank you to everyone who put faith in me and believe that size doesn't matter. This is the ultimate accolade for me. It means so much. Thank you. Rob, welcome into the Leeds Rugby League Hall of Fame.